Mark Ciavarella and Mike O'Conahan were two judges at the center of the infamous Kids for Cash scandal. They were willing to ruin young people's lives if it meant getting their hands on a few bucks. In total, their scam generated something in the neighborhood of $2.6 million. That money was payment for the 2,400 juveniles they sentenced throughout their reign of terror in Luzerine County. In their courtroom, the punishment rarely fits the crime. Many of the unlucky youngsters were first-time offenders. Most of the time, they weren't even allowed access to a lawyer before standing trial and facing their overly harsh sentences. But for Sia Varela and Conahan, they never let due process get in the way of some cold, hard cash. Sia Varela and Conahan were aided in their efforts by a wealthy personal injury lawyer named Robert Powell. Powell and Conahan had been pals for a long time before their team up with Sia Varela. The Pennsylvania-based attorney held aspirations of building his very own private juvenile detention center. Seriously, who wants to grow up to run a child prison? With the help of his judicial buddies, he was able to do just that when he formed PA Child Care. Powell's juvie would ultimately prove to be a vital part of the whole operation. While Sia Varela and Conahan eventually became best friends, they originated from very different backgrounds. Conahan was born into a well-off, upper-class family, whereas Sia Varela did not come from money. Sia Varela spent his early days on the rough-and-tumble streets of Wilkes Bar, Pennsylvania. To this day, Sia Varela is known in his blue-collar hometown as the local kid who made it big. Like his father, the brewery worker, and his mother, the phone operator, Sia Varela had to work for every ounce of wealth and success he managed to obtain. Nobody presented him with silver platters. By getting into law school at Duquesne University in Pittsburgh, Sia Varela transitioned from the humble means in which he grew up to a more prosperous station in life. However, he never lost the hard-nosed determination and edge he fostered during his modest upbringing. Sia Varela judged with a firm hand. His stern presence in the courtroom helped him garner a reputation among his peers as an alpha dog of the legal profession. Sia Varela's fierce and intimidating judicial stature was contrasted by Conahan's quiet and reserved way of doing things. The Hazleton native, Conahan, was spoon-fed the financial means his counterpart had to fight tooth and nail for. Conahan's father was the mayor of his hometown for 12 years. The future judge followed in his family's distinguished footsteps by studying at prestigious institutions like Villanova University and Temple University's Law School. The one thing that connected Conahan with his friend Sia Varela was his rigorous and unforgiving approach to the judge's bench. They were known for handing down harsh sentences even before their malicious scheme ever materialized. Perhaps that's why it was so easy for them to get the kids for cash scam up and running without catching anyone's attention. The devious plan was first hatched in the summer of 2000. It started with Conahan's old lawyer friend Powell and a business proposition. Powell wanted to get his detention center idea off the ground, and who better than two powerful judges to help make that happen? After the three men met and put their heads together, the scheme that would later be described as a freight train without brakes was officially born. Sia Varela helped Powell find the perfect site to construct the prison. At the same time, Conahan ensured the county's budget had plenty of room for his friend's prison as the recently elected president judge. A secret deal was reached that promised $1.3 million in annual rent for the center, which didn't even account for the tens of millions in state funds that would go towards housing the convicted kids themselves. Conahan put a cork in the funding pipeline for the county's public detention centers to eliminate all competition for Powell's detention center. The plan had the political and financial backing it needed to succeed. Dissenters were silenced, including the county controller Steve Flood. Flood leaked a state auditor's report that warned PA child care was bad news. The leaked document detailed how Powell's prison would cost 40% more to operate than the average detention center. But Conahan covered up Flood's efforts to bury him and his partners. The judges used private prison funding methods to their ultimate advantage. There's a major difference between the financial dealings of public and private detention centers. As one might assume, public prisons are run directly by the government and funded on the taxpayer's dime. These prisons are subject to close federal regulation and scrutiny. Certain information like the condition of the institution and the number of prisoners must be reported. It's difficult to take advantage of the public prison system because Big Brother is watching at all times. Private prisons have a lot more leeway. 
They are for-profit facilities operated with the financial well-being of third-party entities in mind. They don't have to report data on their inmates or budgets like public detention centers do. Most importantly, the government contracts handed out to private prisons stipulate that the more prisoners they're holding, the more money they get. As Powell raked in cash, he paid kickbacks to his judge buddies. Indiscriminately sentencing as many people to Powell's private prison as possible put more money in the judge's pockets. Sia Varela and Conahan didn't care about justice for the children who walked into their courtroom. They just wanted to pack PA childcare as tightly as possible. That's why workers at the prison were given specific numbers of kids to expect before the court hearings had even taken place. The kids' legal fate was predetermined, no matter what they were or were not guilty of. Some of the things these judges sentenced kids for were truly insane. There was the poor girl we mentioned earlier who was sent away because she'd taken to MySpace to complain about an assistant principal at her school. Sia Varela also sentenced a 13-year-old to two weeks of boot camp because he trespassed in a vacant building. Then there was the teenager who was put in detention in order to perform five whole months of boot camp for simple shoplifting. These weren't high-level criminals. They were dumb kids who made dumb mistakes, but they were treated like America's most wanted. The real delinquents, it seems, were the judges presiding over their cases. Their unfathomably unfair sentences did not stop there either. A 14-year-old from Sia Varela's hometown of Wilkes Bar was put away for an entire year just for stealing change from unlocked cars to buy a bag of chips. Not exactly the heist of the century. This poor kid wasn't set free until public interest lawyers questioned the constitutionality of the judge's decision and they were pressured to release him. Who could forget the 13-year-old boy who assaulted his mother's boyfriend with a piece of steak and got locked up for two and a half months. The kid knocked over the boyfriend's beer by accident and then ended up tossing a ribeye at the guy during the ensuing argument. In the eyes of the Luzerine County Juvenile Courtroom, this was dangerous behavior. The boy was handcuffed and dragged away to a detention center for months before his father made a stink in the local newspaper and got him released on probation. The kids who faced Sia Varela's absurd sentences hadn't been notified of their right to an attorney a pretty foundational part of the American judicial system, and the Luzerine County judges didn't even bother to mention it. The number of children who appeared before judges without a lawyer present between 1997 and 2003 was nearly five times the average rate. On top of that, the number of children sentenced to detention centers doubled between 2000 and 2001. The judges were also known to turn a legal blind eye to their friends. On one occasion, Sia Varela presided over a high school friend who was accused of going 80 miles per hour in a 55 zone. The judge simply stated, no, I think he was going 60. And that was that. Case closed. While legal malpractice was running rampant through Luzerine County, nothing was done to investigate the judge's fishy behavior. Between 2004 and 2008, the Pennsylvania Judicial Conduct Board received four separate complaints about Conahan and his friends getting kickbacks from for-profit detention centers. The board never reviewed a single document relating to the complaints in any capacity. Sia Varela, Conahan, and Powell were churning so many kids through the prison system that it started getting difficult to hide all of the money they were making from the scam. In 2004, they decided to pool $785,000 of their funds to purchase a condo in Florida. They used the property to disguise the kickbacks as monthly rent from apartment tenants who did not actually exist. The men weren't above enjoying their newfound wealth either. Powell, for instance, bought himself a $1.5 million yacht. The men were living large while the victims of their cruel kids for cash schemes suffered the consequences. Things got dicey for the Luzerine County crew when an unrelated judge called the FBI. Their downfall was set into motion once the state started to put stricter limitations on number of juveniles sentenced to detention centers like PA childcare. Conahan was furious with these new restrictions and blamed some of his colleagues for them. Judge Ann Lakuda tried to open up a judicial misconduct case against Sia Varela and Conahan and was consequently removed from her position. Lakuda ended up going to the FBI with everything she knew about the judge's wrongdoing. Powell lost his nerve once the allegations were made and rumors of an FBI investigation ramped up. He agreed to cooperate fully with the authorities in their corruption probe into the Luzerine County judges. Investigators put a wire on Powell, which was used to record a total of six conversations the injury lawyer had with his buddy Conahan. The damning recordings gave prosecutors everything they needed to bring down the judges. They could be heard discussing sensitive financial details with Powell, including conversations about all the kickbacks and secret cash they collected and tried to hide. Once Powell flipped, the jig was basically up. 
Plea agreements were offered to both Ciavarella and Conahan. The deals mandated the two serve up to seven years in prison on top of being ordered to pay restitution and accept responsibility for their crimes. Even in the face of overwhelming evidence, the judges refused to admit their misdeeds. As a result, their plea deals were thrown out. Powell pleaded guilty for his role in the criminal operation, and he subsequently had his law license revoked. The real estate agent who helped the three men find the property on which they built the private detention centers also entered a guilty plea. He served just one year behind bars before being released. Sia Varela was sent away for 28 years, while his partner Conahan got 17 and a half years of his own. Conahan was released in 2020 over concerns related to the COVID pandemic. But Sia Varela remains in federal prison and isn't scheduled for release until 2035. In the end, the judges got a taste of their own medicine. At least they actually deserved it, unlike the thousands of kids they punished. The Juvenile Law Center intervened on behalf of all the juveniles sentenced in the Lucerne County courtroom. Approximately 2,500 children had their records erased. But was that enough to repair the lives that were affected by Sia Varela and Conahan? It's possible that these expunged records could still end up on private databases, such as those accessed by potential employers and landlords. So the lasting effects of the Kids for Cash scandal will still be felt long after the evil judges have come and gone. Click here to watch one of these next videos. And let us know in the comments whether you think people in positions of power should get more severe sentences for the same crimes.